Okay, uh, I'm uh, Diran Shur from IBM. Uh, I'm Nicolas uh, from Red Hat, and we are here to um, uh, present you st uh, smart network analytics with uh, Skydive and Cognitive. Um, so I will start with just a brief, uh, what is Skydive? Skydive is a real-time network topology and uh, protocol analyzer. Uh, we developed that uh, three starts roughly three years ago. Um, the goal is like to uh, because this SDN is complex, uh, you have multiple topology, overlay, physical device, uh, and that's we have uh, today uh, all over the uh, all the networks that we have uh, software networks. Um, we have multiple layers of tunneling, and uh, the tools are already um, just based on host like uh, IP, NetNS, uh, TCP dump, uh, etc., OVS. Uh, uh, VSCTL, for example. Um, the goal of the network analysis with uh, Skydive is like to doing uh, uh, monitoring or troubleshooting. Uh, we do that in real time or post mortem, so that we save the flow and the topology in the database. Um, we support multiple infrastructures like with Docker, Neutron, uh, uh, Kubernetes, etc. Okay. You, you have to so use the uh, devices, right? Uh, there? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's uh, sorry. Um, so the the main features are distributed captures um, all around the clusters with the topology and flow. Uh, we have full IPA driven is right in Go. We have some graph engine um, based on Gremlin uh, Tinker Pop Bay um, the language. Uh, it's another implementation, but uh, uh, is that the same kind of language. Um, we have alerting, uh, flow, and packet injection. Um, so um, please go to the uh, UAI, the Skydive Network. You will see the GIF, animated GIF, because that's the PDF presentation. Um, the goal is just to show you just the UI, the basic UI. Um, that you will see uh, a deployment, a simple deployment with uh, four agents, uh, Skydive agents, and uh, with uh, one analyzer. And uh, we show that uh, multiple uh, uh, namespace, and you can see in deep what uh, happens you know, on your networks or is, has been deployed. So basically, that the Skydive architecture, so that we have each host running uh, Skydive agents uh, with uh, some probes, it could be topology probe or flow probes. <laughs> Topology probes it could be Neutron, it could be Docker, it could be uh, Kubernetes. Flow probes, we have uh, multiple captures that we're talking about after. Um, all the information is sent um, to the analyzers. We have uh, multiple for redundancy. And we have, uh, we could save all the flow in the database, uh, in the database and the topology as well. Obviously, there is for open CLI and for the UI uh, uh, for the for the most uh, for the, all the users. Um, so we are here today, like to show you all the different capture techniques that has been used in the, with Skydive and Cognitive. So um, basically, we can retrieve a lot of features from the flow, like you classify the flow, uh, um, and get a number of packets, number of bytes of authorization. If you capture the, all the packets. Uh, or we can get uh, filtering, advanced filtering of the session. Uh, that's one way to uh, start uh, flow captures. Or we implemented the eBPF, uh, special flow table probes uh, within, uh, uh, within uh, Skydive. So depending on the use case, the most important uh, point is that uh, Skydive could be used at monitoring. So we need to just to show what happens in the networks and uh, basically with Monzo is, uh, is used everywhere. Or it could be used as monitoring. So monitoring, obviously, we want to, for example, this port of this VM have uh, some issues. So I would like to do some troubleshooting and record all the packets. Um, it's a little bit time to time you need to do that. Um, but for most of the case that you want to just do more long time monitoring, uh, you can use what I will show you the different solution like with BPF filtering or limited uh, eBPF uh, uh, filter um, fil probes, special probes. 
Um, so yeah, you based on AF packets, obviously a map for the kernel, uh, for the capture all the packets. Um, we see on the next slide uh, what the VPF, uh, eBPF probes uh, has been implemented. And um, basically you have a skydive flow tables in the user lands. Um, that's how we implement, implemented uh, the eBPF capture probes. So uh, one part obviously is the kernel space where the probe will be injected on the socket hook, uh, eBPF socket hook, and uh, we just re retrieve is a big map of, uh, of the session key of the flow um, with the packet counters in a which uh, bus way and the session size. Um, the idea is like to retrieve the data of the, this flow table to Skydav and map it uh, within the nodes that match the captures. Uh, so on the user space, you have a Skydav flow tables um, based on these numbers, but you have other attributes. Like for example, the UUID is like a one, the, the meaning in the whole uh, infrastructures that the unique flow uh, ID. And the tracking ID could be very helpful because it's like the features to track a, um, a flow within the tunnels that we just reach, we calculate the, on, the, on the flow hash of the last uh, IP layers. And it will be mapped within the nodes of uh, the graph of the topology. Um, so here, Leon, we talk about uh, TCP. So uh, we looked for a way to, to capture uh, TCP flows without a, a heavy cost of computation while we didn't have uh, the eBPF probe. So we, we thought about the, the following BPF filter to just capture the uh, TCP fin and scene packet. So you, we, we will capture the beginning and the end of the uh, TCP session, but then we um, we needed to to also to to think about wraparounds because we 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 start when we have the scene packet we know what is the sequential number and we can we c and we know the sequential number at the fin packet so we know the start and the end but what about the wraparounds so. We also wanted to capture uh, uh, the packets. I if you think about the circle of these four gigabytes, so we also capture the packets between zero and 10,000 bytes, for example, and at the end of the uh, four gigabyte, the, 10, 000, uh, the last 10,000 bytes. So we have the beginning and the end, and each uh, uh, wraparound also we, we look about where is the sequence number, so we can track the, the TCP flows to, to look how, how many bytes have been transferred with a very uh, low uh, computation cost. And now we will go to the evaluation. We, we try to, to evaluate uh, this uh, free um, capturing techniques. And we did it on an a Intel 64-core uh, uh, processor with uh, 280 gigabytes of RAM and on Ubuntu 16.04. And uh, uh, we had uh, five pairs of iPerf client and servers who ran on dedicated cores. And we, we just uh, accelerate the bandwidth and, and looked on, on, on the... Uh, how much did it cost us to just look and, and capture the, the, the sessions? And it was very simple environment. You can look on the upper right. We had the two namespaces, the blue namespace and the root namespace connected between the two VTH pairs. And we just observed, captured the, the traffic between these two uh, VTH interfaces. So now we, we can uh, look on the results. So uh, uh, the, the black line is the baseline without any uh, capturing, no monitoring at all. And you can see that uh, we do not spend any uh, computa CPU computation. And um, uh, then at the top, 
the red line, um, this is the AF packet uh, capturing mechanism while we capture everything and uh, transfer it up to the user space. So you can see this is very uh, uh, heavy uh, computation cost and you cannot do that in the normal case unless you start troubleshooting a problem. You, you will not want to, to go like that in production. And then we have the, the green line, it is the, uh, the eBPF capturing technique. And you can see it, it, is, um, uh, it is pretty cheap, but around one gigabit per second, there is a, a little curve and it starts to scale uh, not, uh, not optima optimally. And then uh, we have the, the blue line, which is the BPF filter that I was talk talking about that can uh, um, capture the amount of data that have been uh, transferred inside a TCP uh, session, which you can see is pretty uh, uh, cheap computation-wise. So if we can look on this graph also, you can see the, 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 di uh, the difference between the eBPF and the the BPF filter, which is uh, uh, d designed to capture TCP flows. So uh, to summarize these three uh, techniques, we can see that, that if you capture everything, you, uh, you have a very big uh, uh, overhead uh, of computation. And uh, if you have eBPF in your system, you might use it in, in, in it, and it uh, will not cost too much of CPU overhead. And also the, the special uh, BPF uh, uh, filter to, to track, uh, to capture uh, TCP sessions. Um, now I, I will uh, talk about a, a cognitive service which is based on top of the uh, uh, skydive project. And, and, and if someone wants to, after, after this uh, uh, talk, to, to, to play with it, uh, there is a, uh, you should go to this uh, URL at the bottom and ask me for uh, the credentials, and you can play and feel how, how it likes. So here is a, a picture from the cognitive dashboard. And, and the cognitive is, is com combined from two aspects. The first is, is the ex explore aspect, which is based on the skydive, where you can uh, explore your topology and, and capture the traffic um, uh, where specifically you want inside the topology to start capturing it. Uh, for example, this is the view, like uh, you can see here the topology and in the right side uh, where you uh, start to uh, activate capture on specific elements inside the, the topology. And th the second aspect of cognitive uh, is the analyze. Um, and I will show, a, a here is a, a simple uh, um, example of analyze where we, we have uh, anomaly detection uh, where in the upper part of the screen you can see two lines. One is the uh, a prediction load on the network, and the other line is uh, what really happened in each point of, of time. And you can see in the, the lower part of the screen we have some kind of a threshold uh, 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 when the difference between the prediction and reality become more than a, a certain threshold, the system will automatically uh, alert us of, uh, of an error. So you can see uh, we have two relative errors at the end when we passed this uh, threshold. So this is an example of analyzing the data and, and, uh, and getting real-time uh, error alerts about what's going on in the data center. Okay. Um, another way to do operation analytics with skydive is like uh, to use uh, socket info features. Uh, socket info features you can uh, you should imagine like you have um, a net stats or SS um, uh, information from the process. 
and you will be able to have the f yeah the, basically the socket information. Um, so which connection, which IP, which port we connected uh, from the client onto the servers, and uh, which process has been used. Uh, imagine that you have that per host or pair on uh, we could map the process each time for the client and on the, on the server side. Uh, so, um, for example, if we, we implement that with the eBPF and the CRA probe, uh, K probe, and we have the, the at the end I show you is just the CSV that could you we generate with the tools that we named Flow Matrix. Uh, based on the Skydive API, they just a simple script that then um, uh, do the second inform information on uh, all your graph. Um, so you could see like uh, that the VM2 communicate with the VM1 and uh, uh, through like a Python uh, Neutron OpenV switch, uh, client discuss with the OpenV switch servers, and uh, MySQL D with uh, the console uh, Nova console, or oh, basically Nova console to discuss with uh, MySQL D. Um, afterwards, we could uh, get this, all this information and re-inject in Skydive interface uh, thanks to the graph uh, API. Um, and uh, have a representation at the application and service level that all the nodes will communicate through the sockets. Um, another point is like very important is that we, this is cost uh, almost nothing in the performances in the, uh, in the, um, in the environment, in a running environment, because you just retrieve the sockets that uh, kernel uh, will uh, give us. Um, the, the goal of, the, of, this, uh, of this tool is of the highest level of what uh, application, if it normal that you have this uh, kind of uh, socket. Did we have the communication between the client and the server? Uh, for what, whatever application you have. You know, sometimes customers didn't know what they have, uh, how many connections they do to the MySQL server or whatever. Uh, so with uh, Skydive, thanks to the uh, Gremlin expression, you can express this kind of, uh, uh, and retrieve this kind of information. To um, summarize uh, all this presentation, so Skydive could be used as a framework that, uh, thanks to Cognitive, is a good, good demonstration uh, that you have distributed uh, um, network topology uh, all over uh, your, your clusters. You can do flow exploration and you can do analytics on it. Um, the cap we've seen the different capture mechanism uh, depending on your use case. It could be troubleshooting and monitoring. Um, Obviously, connective is like the big, uh, my biggest uh, today to um, do analytics using Skydive. My thanks to Skydive that uh, as input for connective, and do flow and uh, let's say a comportment of, uh, of of the usage uh, analytics, operational analytics. Um, the operational analytics. Uh, could be anomaly detection, as demonstrated by cognitive and uh, LSTM algorithm, or could be uh, socket information, uh, socket info just as seen on the on the Skydive. Um, the next roadmap uh, for the roadmap of Skydive, we plan to have uh, an hybrid captures, so that meaning that we just retrieve the first uh, full um, full packet, but first the first packet that until the flow is classified and use eBPF probes afterwards to keep the counters. Uh, that because the only the session is important for us, like to have the counter updated, uh, like number of packets, number of uh, uh, number of uh, bytes in each way. But what is important is that the full information, because eBPF has limited, uh, we cannot have, uh, we didn't support um, tunneling, we didn't support. Uh, retransmission, video, and etc. Um, that's a kind of on the classification. So that's the that kind of uh, uh, feature that will be useful to troubleshooting in Skydive and even monitoring. Um, the CAPROB um, uh, local process um, could be um, used to get directly the kernel stack. Uh, Linux, kernel, uh, kernel, Linux uh, kernel stack uh, counters from the fragmentation and TCP uh, reassembly. Um, that's another way that we want to include in the in Skydive. So afterwards, we retrieve you know, all the graph. Um, so basically, yeah, that's finished. And if you have any question.
Questions? Mm. The management staff is, are you planning to make any release <coughs> of that? The management piece and uh, the, sky, uh, the cognitive part. Yeah. Is that going to be available as well or? Uh, sorry, uh, could you, could you, you, you? I think there's two pieces to this, right? Skydive. Yes, skydive is, uh, is the a management piece. Yes, skydive is just uh, used uh, to send the, all the information to Cognitive. Right. Cognitive is based on the skydive. Okay, you, there is anything available at all, or at some point will be available? Any plans to make Cognitive available? Or? Cognitive is Cognitive is available right now in, oh. in uh, IBM uh, Cloud as a service. And okay. y you can try it uh, uh, with the URL inside the, the, the presentation. Okay. I can give you credential and you can, uh, you can try it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah, Skydive is just an open source service, uh, an open source uh, project. So feel free to contribute. Uh, and, uh, so see I, on the I didn't know I, IBM had a cloud. Is there a cloud division for IBM? <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> don't want to sound dumb. <laughs> there, there is a, a, a cloud group. Uh, sorry, is it like a public uh, cloud or? Uh, right now, it is inside a, a private cloud. Uh, okay. Uh, survey inside a private cloud. Okay. okay, thanks. Anybody else with a question? Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Uh,